Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. Trump's governing strategy of a promise, under deliver. The final key to the way I promote is bravado, Donald Trump wrote in his 1987 book, The Art of the Deal. I play to people's fantasies. What was true of Trump the flamboyant Manhattan real estate magnate is now true of Trump the President of the United States. From big, beautiful border walls to total and complete Muslim bans, Trump has made a habit of sweeping promises that no headlines, only to deliver more modest results. Sometimes, it's because Trump's rhetoric meets the reality of policymaking or the courts. Other times, it's because Trump is making a grand opening bid in negotiations. And often he just loses interest. But Trump's habit of overpromising and underdelivering has created a credibility gap unknown to the presidency in the modern era. Trump, for example, promised a big, beautiful wall on the campaign trail, to be financed by Mexico. But a massive spending bill that Trump signed on Friday provides $1.6 billion for just 110 miles of wall along the nearly 2,000-mile-long border. And the money is being provided by Congress, not the Mexican government as Trump had promised. There was also the Muslim ban, with candidate Trump calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States until our country's representatives can figure out what is going on. In practice. Trump implemented a travel ban targeting seven Muslim-majority countries, was severely rebuked by the courts, and has since implemented a less stringent ban on six countries. Other times, Trump makes big pronouncements in the moment, such as when he seemed open during a televised meeting with lawmakers to sweeping gun control measures, only to backtrack within hours. He likes to play to television viewers by making big grandiose announcements said one person close to the White House. When the issue starts to fade out in the American consciousness, he may not follow through. He also made a big splash on Friday morning by threatening to veto the $1.3 trillion spending package, briefly raising the risk of the third government shutdown this year, before again reversing himself. The episode seemed to crystallize much about Trump, a surprise announcement hours of suspense and then the resolution that was expected all along. And while he has long delivered tough talk on trade, his controversial announcement of steep steel tariffs has been drastically scaled back with Mexico, Canada, Australia, Argentina, Brazil and the European Union, together accounting for more than half of U.S. steel imports, scoring temporary relief. People may not always think big themselves, but they can still get very excited by those who do. Trump had it in the art of the deal passage. That's why a little hyperbole never hurts. People want to believe that something is the biggest and the greatest and the most spectacular. I call it truthful hyperbole. It's an innocent form of exaggeration, and a very effective form of promotion. Exaggeration appears to be as omnipresent in Trump's White House's controversy and staff turnover, a newly accepted part of Washington's day-to-day. -day. For longtime Trump watchers, the habit is hardly surprising. He is this unique amalgam of being an egomaniac and being wildly insecure all at once, said Tim O'Brien, who wrote the 2005 Trump biography Trump Nation. And he has this need, I think, in front of people to win them over almost regardless of who they are, and in that moment he's quite happy to do that. He doesn't really do anything meaningful to try to follow up because he's not patient and he's not tactical. O'Brien added. It's just Trump being Trump. And Trump has at times delivered on his bratocious talk. For months, he promised a massive tax package, and while the economic impact of the big, beautiful tax cut is yet to be seen, it was still the most significant piece of tax legislation in more than 30 years. The White House did not respond to a request for comment. Trump's verve for fantastical promises is seen as a potent political tool by his opponents. You need something that cuts against the grain or that you follow out to its natural logical extension even if the extension invites controversy, said Brian Fallon, Hillary Clinton's press secretary during the 2016 campaign. Trump understood that almost intuitively, 
Fallon said, and with positions like the Muslim ban, he made it so that no other Republican could outflank him on the right. Such outlandish ideas, he said, inspired controversy, inspired chatter, and washed over the national audience just by the sheer strength of its own message. Trump has continued the grandiose pledges from the West Wing, adding to a chaotic atmosphere in which priorities can shift and policies can change on a dime, as soon as Trump makes a pronouncement, expected or not. It is seen as one reason staff turnover has been so high, but it might not matter, as far as his base is concerned. It clearly wears down his White House staff and his family, and it's taken a toll on his marriages, O'Brien said. People who have to deal with it personally on a daily basis become unwound by it. But his base isn't really dealing with him on a daily basis. They believe that Washington's the problem, I don't think they blame the president, said the person close to the White House. They blame the gridlock in Washington that he's trying to overcome. Stormy Daniels' attorney Trump hasn't tweeted about her because it's all true. The attorney for porn star Stormy Daniels suggested Monday that President Donald Trump hasn't tweeted about Daniels because, despite denials made on his behalf, the president knows her allegations of an affair are true. Isn't it interesting, Gail, that we have a president that will tweet about the most mundane matters, but he won't tweet about my client, the affair? the agreement or the $130,000 payment, Michael Avnati told CBS This Morning anchor Gail King on Monday. You know why he won't tweet about it? Because it's true. It's 100% true. In a 60 Minutes interview that aired Sunday night, Daniels rehashed the details of her relationship with Trump, which began in Reno, Nevada, in 2006 with one sexual encounter. The two continued to speak and meet, Daniels said with the president promising but ultimately failing to secure a spot for the adult film actress on his NBC reality TV show, The Apprentice. Daniels also said that after she spoke about her affair with Trump to In Touch magazine, she was threatened in a Las Vegas parking lot by a man who approached her and her infant daughter and told her leave Trump alone. Forget the story, and that's a beautiful little girl. It'd be a shame if something happened to her mom. Though Trump has not personally addressed the allegations, the White House has denied that he had an affair with Daniels. The president's longtime personal attorney, Michael Cohen, has said that the president did not have an affair with Daniels and was not aware of a non-disclosure agreement signed days before the 2016 election that paid Daniels $130,000, money paid by Cohen. Of Natty has called the suggestion that Cohen acted without Trump's knowledge laughable. Daniels is suing the president and Cohen, seeking to void the non-disclosure agreement because it was never signed by the president. Cohen has said he intends to recoup damages from Daniels over her public discussion of the alleged affair, a figure he said could climb as high as $20 million. An attorney for Cohen told ABC's Good Morning America on Monday that Cohen will not rest until he recovers every single penny of damages, and it could be $20 million. David Schwartz, Cohen's attorney, said there is lying is all over the 60 Minutes interview, raising questions as to why Daniels had previously denied the affair. Daniels said she felt intimidated by Trump's legal team, and why she went to an exercise class immediately after being threatened in the Las Vegas parking lot instead of going to the police. Schwartz called Trump a third party beneficiary of the non disclosure agreement and accused of Natty of attempting to try Daniels's case in the court of public opinion. She's in it for the money, Schwartz said. In Sunday's 60 Minutes interview, Avnati called Cohen's $20 million threat thuggish. Monday, he said he and Daniels were only getting started, suggesting that he may be in possession of digital evidence that would prove the affair. Mr. Cohen wants the American people to believe that this is all false and he just paid the $130,000 even though there was no basis to the allegation, of Natty said. Well if that's true, Gail, every viewer right now should call Michael Cohen's office here in New York City, claim they had an affair with the president and according to Mr. Cohen, he's going to send you $130,000 immediately. It's laughable. It's a joke.
White House Trump has confidence in Shulkin at this point in time. President Donald Trump has confidence in David Shulkin at this point in time despite reports that the Veterans Affairs Secretary may be fired as early as this week, White House Deputy Press Secretary Hogan Gidley said on Monday. We all serve at the pleasure of the President. If he is not pleased, you'll know it, Gidley said in an interview on Fox News. At this point in time though, he does have confidence in Dr. Shulkin. He is a secretary and he has done some great things at the Virginia as you know, the president wants to put the right people in the right place at the right time and that could change. Shulkin has reportedly been viewed negatively after being accused of excessive spending on travel and for saying he has been given the blessing of the White House to purge insolent VA staffers, though he's been given no such approval. When pressed about reports that Trump would like to fire Shulkin Monday but doesn't have a replacement, Gidley said that when the president wants to make a change, he will make it. He doesn't have to try, he doesn't have to guess. He has the power to do so whether he is a replacement or not, he can still make a change, he said. The president wants to put the best people around him to execute his policy. Kane, Trump is lying or delusional on DACA. Virginia Senator Tim Kaine shot back Sunday at President Donald Trump's rhetoric on DACA, saying the president is lying or delusional when he blames Democrats for the end of the program. He is either lying or he is completely delusional, the Democratic senator said on CNN's State of the Union, adding later, if President Trump believes in DACA, all he has to do is retract his executive order from September where he broke a promise to Dreamers and said he was going to end the program. In September, Trump ended the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals program, which was established by former President Barack Obama to allow some undocumented immigrants in the United States to stay in the country legally and obtain work permits. Negotiations to revive the program have repeatedly failed in Congress. Trump has tried to blame Democrats for the failure of negotiations. DACA was abandoned by the Democrats. Very unfair to them, Trump wrote on Friday. We do not have the support of the White House, we don't have the support of Republicans, Kane said. We either have to change their minds, or we have to get more Democrats in office. 